Okay, we are now in code.org's Unit 7, Parameters Return and Libraries, the 23-24 Curriculum for Computer Science Principles. Uh, we are going to start with Lesson 2, Parameters and Return Investigate. So I'm going to jump in to Level 1, and if you will bear with me, I've already done this with a class earlier in the year, so I'm going to need to possibly go to an original version history so I can start over fresh. You shouldn't have to do that, but if you came here because you were confused and you had some stuff in there and you just want to start fresh, um, obviously that version history, start over with the initial version would be what you'd want to do. Okay, so it tells us to run the program, read the code, discuss these questions, how does calculate work, what are the arguments passed through the parameter in calculate when it is called, what types of data does the parameter require in the calculator function? Where can you find that information? What is returned? What type of data? Okay, so let's um, just, first I like to just play around and see what it does. So we're gonna run this and let's just do five and three. If I click, click uh, plus, it outputs five plus three is eight. Um, it also tells me the answer is an even number. If I wanna do nine, and seven and subtract all right nine minus seven is two and then if i want to do four and three all right four times three is twelve so what i have to do is input the two values first then click an operation button and it's going to give me an output down here so how does calculate work okay well let's go find that function calculate so Calculate is going to get an input of number one. It's going to get an input from number two from the user. All right, so it's getting a number. So that's your data type right there is a number. So it's going to have two numbers. And then we create a, a local variable called answer. Then we have a conditional. If the symbol, which that is our parameter in this function, so symbol is the parameter. If symbol is a plus sign, then we are going to add a number one and number two and store that in answer. Else, if symbol is a minus sign, we are going to take number one minus number two, store that in answer. And then we just have a general else. Um, we're gonna multiply since there's only three options. We have a if, else, if, else, and we're gonna multiply. Okay, so to kind of answer that, how does it work? Um, what it is doing is when you call the function calculate, it is going to pass a symbol here, plus minus or the multiply, um, will be the argument that passes through. It's gonna pull number one from the input box. It's gonna pull number two, and we just kind of walk through um, what it's gonna do. All right, um, what are the arguments passed through the parameter and calculate when it is called? So when it is called, um, it's going to be so, we're, these on events kind of trigger it, so on the event the add button is clicked. Then the plus sign is the argument that passes through. If you click the minus button, the minus sign is the argument passed through. Um, so the arguments um, with this function, the arguments are actually a string data type. Um, our inputs uh, being stored into the variables number one and number two are going to be uh, the number data type. All right, so what types of data does the parameter require in the calculate function? Um, again, that's going to be... Um, the parameter requires a string. Okay, what is returned? What type of data? A number is going to be uh, returned. Okay, um, at the end, um, answer kind of, I uh, apologize for that. I'll take that back. I should have looked before I spoke. Um, so answer kind of gets this jumbled up mess down here, but what it does, uh, I'm going to ignore this mod operator for a moment, but uh, answer gets number one plus, and then just kind of a blank space, a symbol. All right, um, and then we have a space, number two equals, and then whatever answer was stored. So in all actuality, um, answer is going to return a string. Um, so it will, even though it shows the operation, the final, uh, the return of answer is going to be a string. Okay, um, if time allows, make these changes to the code, add a divide button in addition to displaying if the number is even or odd, display if the number is divisible by three, um, so what we're going to do first is go ahead and work on that divide button. One thing I've not understood over the years with code.org 
is they have not yet given us a divide symbol, but we'll see what happens. We're going to go to the design view really quick. And we're going to um, slot everything over just a bit. So our X position, we're going to slot everything over by 30, uh, minus 30. So I'm going to change my X position to 20. I'm going to click on the next one. I'm going to subtract by 30. So that will be 95. I'm going to click on this one. I'm going to subtract by 30. So that'll be 170. Okay. And so I'm going from 20 to 95. So they're going up roughly 75 each time. So I'm going to take this multiply button and I'm going to duplicate it. But I'm going to go back to my original. It is at a Y position of 175. I want to add 75 to that. So that should be at 245. Oh, did I do that dead on? Uh, I guess miracles do exist. Um, I did not know that would happen. Okay, so um, I'm going to rename this. Uh, the others are called multiply buttons. So I'm going to rename this divide button. And we're going to look and see if code.org has updated us uh, with an icon. I'm going to type math, nothing. If I do add, oh, there is a plus. If I do divide, there is nothing. So what I'm going to do just to save time, I'm going to um, instead input text. And I'm just going to do the divide button as a slash. And I need to clear out an image um, and then my text color I want to format I'm just gonna make that black and my font size I'm gonna make that a little bit bigger so let's go 22 and my font family let's see if there's a bold maybe an aerial black um, and we can maybe make that a little bit bigger now. So maybe a 32. And we can't tell a huge difference now. So um, that kind of makes it look as it should. So half of this video is just creating a button. Um, we're going to go to our code view now. And what we're going to do is we're going to add in um, to our calculate symbol. We're going to add to this if, else, if. I'm going to add here. So now I need to check to see if symbol is the um, X. So I will, well, actually, let me go back to see what it's set as exactly. So if I multiply, so, okay, it's going to be this, the asterisk. So that's what we have to kind of double check. So I'm going to say if, and I'm just going to type this in, symbol is, and then I'm going to do a blank, an asterisk. Okay. We're going to multiply. And then for the else, um, I'm going to – actually, let me just do this the right way. I won't take shortcuts because you're here because you – I'm going to do the X equals to update. And answer is going to get number 1 divided by – number two. Okay. And then I need to add an on event. And I'm just going to copy that one. I'm going to select that, do a control C and a control V to paste. That did not work. I'll just do it the old fashioned way, I suppose. So on event, I apologize for the lag. This is the point in the day where code.org can sometimes get frustrated. I'm going to reload, refresh, maybe jump start it. I'm going to wait just a moment. 
Okay, at this point, I'm going to reload this unresponsive page. Exit page. Let's try reloading. So students, I do feel your pain. Um, I know this happens sometimes. All right. Okay, so now I've got an awesome mess. Um, looks like I was in the process of doing something, so I just need to finish down there divided by number two. Okay, show blocks. Okay, um, so hopefully you didn't have your code.org zone out on you. Um, so maybe I can fix that in an edit. Um, I'm going to copy, and I'm going to paste. There we go. Okay, and then I'm going to change the trigger to be the divide button is clicked. Then we're going to pass the divide symbol through the parameter. Um, and at that point, I believe we are set. So now we're going to test it out. We're going to run. So I'm going to do 12 for divide. 12 divided by 4 equals 3. Um, there we go. The answer is an odd number. Um, for the sake of time, I am going to omit uh, displaying if the number is divisible by 3. You would need to do an extra uh, mod operation right here. Um, so you would do, just to kind of talk through it without doing it, um, you'd have to store it. to that. I guess I can do that really quick. Um, let's do this. Um, I'm just going to do it else if make it a quick change sometimes I think it's gonna take longer than it does so if I do else if answer mod 3 equals 0 meaning it's divisible by 3 um, I'm gonna do this I'm gonna do control C And I probably should just do a separate if statement now that I think about it. So building the flame as I'm applying it, I'm just going to do it. Let's fix that. And let's just do answer. Um, and we'll do the, I'm going to need a new label, but I'll fix that in a moment. So let me slide. Okay. Let me control Z the heck out of this thing to go back before I messed with it. Okay, so, all right, if, okay, I'm just going to do answer, I don't want a for loop, answer mod 3 is 0. Let me go to my design view, and I have an even odd label down there. Let me duplicate that and just move it up a smidge. We're going to call this threes. Okay, and we're going to go back to our code. I'm going to just copy that to save time. All right, and we want to set the text of threes. So is by three. Um, and if you wanted it to return, like to say it's not divisible by three, if it's not, we could add that. So for example, let's run that now. So if I did, um, so trying to think of it. So if I did, for example, 81 and nine and I divide, I should get the answer is divisible by three. Well, I multiplied, um, that should still work. So let me try that again. 81 nine divide okay so I've got an issue going on let me reset and let me go to text and see if I maybe didn't have the space run I know I tested out earlier 12 divided by 4 and for some reason now it is 
So maybe that didn't set a divide button. Ah, it didn't update when uh, when code.org froze on me. It didn't save. Okay. All sorts of glitches today. 81 divided by 9 should return 9, and the 9 is divisible by 3. If I do 25 divided by 5, all right, it didn't clear that out. So the for time's sake, again, I'm sorry. Um, let me just do a set text so that it does something. The answer is not divisible by 3. Okay, so again, we'll do 16 divided by 4. The answer is not. Okay, so a whole bunch of hullabaloo for not much. All right, um, so that finishes level one. Let's jump into level two. And again, level two, I'm going to go back to my initial version history. So starting with the initial version. Okay, we've got the word game helper. All right, so we've got an app that allows us to select the number of characters in a word and what letter it starts with. I uh, shouldn't have chosen four letter words, but yeah. And then if I go down to like Q, quit. So if I do like a two little, so it should say no options available if there are no options. All right, so this is a word game helper that uses the words data set. Uh, so it's just kind of showing us with a partner, test the app, see what's happening. All right, each function now reads. If you have extra time, modify. So let's just kind of run through what this app does. All right, we are creating a list called word list. We are pulling from a data set called words from the word column. So if we jump over to our data view, we can see the words list. So obviously a pretty extensive data set. If I go, so there's, yeah, um, probably almost 5,000 um, data points there. So massive data set. Um, we have a function, or not function, but a filtered word list. Um, we have a function called filter. So let's go look at what filter does. So filter has two parameters, len, which is a short for length, and letter. All right, so when we call this function, because it's the, that data set is so big and we have to wait a little bit for the filtered word list to be cleared out and then created. What it actually does is it shows that waiting image and then kind of makes it unclickable um, or shows the unclickable just to kind of pass the time. Um, and then the output is cleared out again temporarily so that we could run it multiple times. Um, to get the filtered word list, all right, we are going to iterate through the entire length of the word list, almost 5,000 words. And we are saying if um, the length of the word at the given index um, is equal to len, which is one of our parameters, and the word list i.substring01, what that does, what that substring code does, um, it is the first letter of what this means is start it. So words themselves, strings, for lack of, I should say strings, um, strings here in code.org and JavaScript, um, each character in a string also has an index, just like each element in a list has an index. So what this means is the substring that's being created is taking whatever letter is at index zero of that string. Um, it is non-inclusive. So what that means is it ranges from zero to one, the first value is included, the second value is not. That basically just means start at the first letter, take the first letter, and then you're gonna chop that first letter off. Okay, so we have a logical operator here. So you have to have both the length parameter and the letter parameter have to be equal. So it's iterating through the entire word list length. If the length of a word is the same as the argument that you enter for uh, LEN, and the letter that the word starts with is the same as the letter you pass through in the argument when you call this function. It will then add that word to filtered word list. Um, so whatever word is at that index. Okay. 
Then this is our kind of fail safe. So like I tried uh, two letters with Q that doesn't exist. So if the filtered word list length is zero, so after that entire list is iterated, then it's going to say filtered word list. It's going to add no options available. Okay. Then it's going to hide the waiting image. It's going to hide the unclickable and it's going to set the text in the output area to filtered word list. It's using a join of a comma. Um, I like to use the, uh, actually a space. So I'm going to do, um, I'm actually going to change that to a backslash N and the separator will be a blank line. I'm going to reset and run. So now if I do um, like five letter words that start with A, um, it goes down. So you can see there's not enough room for all of them. Um, that may be why they did the comma. So we can go back and change that. All right. Um, reset, run. Okay. Um, so that is kind of how this works. So well, that's the function. So when we call filter, um, we get a number from length dropdown. That is going to be the LEN parameter. So actually our argument is going to vary based on what the user input is. Um, and then this argument is going to be a text. Now also notice it moves it to lowercase each time. Um, so that way we don't have, even though it's listed as a, a B, uh, even though it's listed as capital, it's going to convert it to lowercase um, for the purpose of keeping it all standard there. Um, so it does it that first time it gets the number, gets the text, and then it says on event, um, we change the length drop down. It's going to call filter again, or if we change the letter drop down, it's going to run that function again. Um, and then again, filter kind of the last thing it does is it sets the text to the output. Um, so that's kind of how it works. The thing it asked us to modify, if we had time, remove the letter drop box and replace it with an input box, update the code so the user can type any number of letters and only words that start with those letters are the specified link, uh, enter the specified length will be displayed. Um, that one, I could do that. Let's see, update the any number of letters. So what we would have to do to do that, that's gonna, um, I would have to add something else. Um, what I will say for time's sake, if you have to make that change, um, I may do a separate video on that. That's gonna take a little bit of time because I think I may have to add another parameter. I could be wrong. Um, but I will try to do a separate video for that later. Um, for now, I'll kind of conclude the basic explanation here and move on to our check for understanding. Um, and this one, obviously, so what are the benefits of writing functions that use uh, parameters in return? Let's at least two. So for parameters, um, you can have more complexity with our functions in a smaller space. It makes your functions more powerful and efficient. Uh, for returns, it removes the need for so many variables because um, you don't necessarily have to store the output of a function of variable. You can just call the function, and if there's a return, that value can be displayed in lieu of a variable. Um, so again, if, if I'm late in updating the uh, modification there, uh, feel free to shoot me an email, and I will try to get that posted uh, sooner rather than later. Alrighty.